You don't like that? Well, how necessary is that for people to see? I guess it's not. <laughs> Probably yeah, none of saying. it is. So there's other things too besides yeah, that. I mean, it's <coughs> stupid things. It's all the dog pictures. <laughs> I guess it's all preference. I, just, I don't want to discourage you. Good morning. How's everyone doing today? Great. How was your Sunday service? Good? Blessed. Blessed? Good. Ours was. <clears throat> we had a great time. We um, had a company here that uh, did free blood test work. They had, I think, uh, close to 30 people mm -hmm. have their uh, blood taken and, and they'll get results in 48 hours in a little craft fair and I went really good so let's get our Bibles <clears throat> and turn to Titus Titus we'll be in chapter 2 <clears throat> let's see here you <laughs> so let's pray and we'll we'll get into the word I think some more people are coming right now hi Mariana come on in <laughs> we're in Titus chapter 2 <clears throat> so Perry did you get on on TV? What was it? No, it's going to come out in March or April. Storage Wars? They'll let me know and I'll let you know. We can all watch it. You might be on TV, huh? Uh, maybe for one second. So <laughs> it was on me a couple of times. Really? But you know, they added it and stuff. Well, we'll have a movie star in, in our church. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's pray. Oh, gracious Lord, we thank you, Father, for this Monday morning and for your grace and mercies, Lord. And Lord, I, I really thank you for your word, Lord. It's so comforting uh, to read it, Lord. It just brings so much comfort to our hearts, Lord, when we're going through sicknesses and illnesses, Lord. And I thank you for that word that you gave me <clears throat> early this morning, Lord. It was just uh, so encouraging, Father. <clears throat> and I thank you, Lord, that you were able to use it, Father, for your glory, Lord. Lord, as we uh, continue to just go through your word, we pray, Father, that you will... Just teach us and lead us, Lord God, and, and instruct us, Father, in, in righteousness, Lord God. And we pray this, Father, through the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Welcome, <clears throat> Titus chapter 2. Welcome, Facebook. Glad you guys are, are joining us. <clears throat> so in chapter 2, I read it earlier, and there's a lot of instruction. So... Paul is instructing Titus concerning the church there in Ephesus. A, a lot of the epistle letters you'll find are instructive letters. Uh, there are different types of uh, letters that, that God has given to us, and there's different forms. So one form is instructive. Uh, another form is narrative. We have a lot of narratives like in, like what we just did on Sunday when we went through Matthew, we saw the narrative of Jesus sending the multitude away, going praying, and then telling the story of the whole storm and Peter walking on water. That would be a narrative. But there's also uh, poems, prophetic, that go along with the Psalms and so forth, and those you have to take them as uh, prophetic or poet poetic <clears throat> um, because they're rhymes and poems and you have to take it within that context but in the epistles mainly their instruction and so this is an instruction here in chapter 2 that we have from Paul to Titus so he starts off with but that conjunction uh, going back to verse 16 they profess to know God but in their works they deny him being abominable disobedient disqualified for every good work and then he says but as for you, and there's a difference there, right? As for you, you should be different. That really is the mark of a believer, is the difference between you and the unbeliever. The difference on how you live your life and how they live their life. Uh, as he mentioned in chapter 1, the, the Cretans are gluttons and liars, and, and that shouldn't be us. We should be honest, and we should 
tell the truth and <clears throat> live a righteous life. And so there has to be evidence of your salvation. And that evidence is that you're a new creature in Christ Jesus. That old things pass away and behold, all things become new. Uh, something kind of like a light switch, you know, clicks on and is like, oh, this makes sense. Something has changed. So again, but as for you, speak the things which are proper for sound doctrine. Uh, that and, and here's the sound doctrine that he's giving Titus here. Uh, that the older men be sober. Now the word sober there is talking about wine. We were just talking about that a little bit earlier. <clears throat> that they are to be sober and not intoxicated with wine. Uh, reverent, temperate, sound in faith, in love, in patience. Uh, these are characteristics of an older man. So if you're an older man... I really would encourage you to, to write these <coughs> instructions down, especially if they pertain to you, and, and review them every so often. You know, if I'm an older man, then I need to be very careful to be sober, not be intoxicated with, with wine or with strong drink. Um, be reverent, uh, reverent to God, reverent and respectful to people, uh, temperate, uh, patient, uh, sound in faith. Am I sound in faith, in love, in patience? Am I that as an older man? Then he goes to the older woman. The older woman, likewise, that they be reverent. Again, that re word reverence can also mean behavior that is becoming. You know, how they present themselves in behavior. <clears throat> not slanders, uh, not given to much wine, teachers of good, teachers of good things, that they admonish the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children. Now, the older women have a responsibility to teach the younger women. I think a balanced church has both. Right? You, have, you have elderly people, okay, well-rooted people. <laughs> you have well-rooted people, and then you have younger people. And I think that the younger people, if they're wise and filled with the Spirit, I think that they should look up to the older people and say, there's some wisdom there, there's some experience there that I can probably glean from. I, I actually like talking to older people. I had met this one lady when I was doing a job years ago. She was out in Corona, and she had a water leak that was dripping on an electrical line, which was causing her meter to go faster. And I, found, I actually took the extra time, and I, I found that. She was in her her 80s. <clears throat> she was in a, a walker, lived there in a mobile park alone. And I just got talking to her and with her and she was a believer. And we just kind of clicked off because we both had Christ in common. Though she was a Lutheran, which is nothing's wrong with Lutherans, but we were just totally different, but yet we had this fellowship. And, and to the point whenever I was in the neighborhood, I'd just come by for lunch and we'd sit there and we'd talk, you know, about the Lord. And it was it was really, really neat. And I learned so much from from older people. I love talking to older people and their experiences. I actually will, will ask them questions now that I'm older, <coughs> but they're still older people than me. So the older <clears throat> are to instruct the younger um, to love their husbands, um, to love their children. That's a good mother, is one that loves their husbands, to show the children how to love husbands and also love the children. They need that example on how to love their spouses. Uh, to be discreet, uh, which means self-controlled, um, chase, homemakers, uh, good, obedient to their own husband, uh, that the word of God may not be blasphemed. So the reason for this instruction, I mean the real underlying reason is that God would not be blasphemy, that people would look at us Christians, and unfortunately this doesn't happen all the time, and, and be able to say, wow, they are godly people. You know, there is, there is something to say about them, but on the contrary, it seems like in so many places people are having negative attitude towards, towards Christians because there are a lot of people that call themselves Christians but really don't live the Christian life. They don't live like Paul's instructing Titus to instruct the church there. And so the people on the outside look, well, what's the difference there? They lie, just like I lie, so why should I be a Christian? They steal just like I steal, so why should I be a Christian? You know, there's no need for me to be a Christian. And really, Paul's heart 
is that God may not be blasphemed. Uh, that's responsibility on our part, isn't it? A big responsibility. That's why I think that we should write these down and remind ourselves of these things. Likewise, exhort the young men, verse 6, to be sober-minded. <clears throat> um, the sober-minded in the Greek could be to curb one's passion, uh, keeping your passions under, under control. This is the uh, younger men in all things, showing yourself to be a pattern of good works, in doctrine, showing integrity, reverence, incorruptibility, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that no one who is an opponent may be ashamed having nothing evil to say to you. Now, reminds me of Paul talking to Titus or, or to Timothy. We were in Timothy when he was telling Timothy, you know, let no one despise your youth, but be an example. So that same truth is pretty much general for all of us. Uh, if you're a young man, this is how you ought to act. This, is, this should be your character, that you should be sober-minded in all things, showing yourself to be a good pattern for those that are around you, showing integrity, uh, integrity, you know, honesty, what you really believe in, and hanging on to that. I was talking to my <clears throat> my granddaughter uh, the other day, and uh, we were on a, a sub, some subject, and and I just uh, I think it was I that, that mentioned uh, controlling, being controlling, and she says she looks at me and says, "Yeah, I think you hear a little bit of that," and I says, "So let me ask you, when have I ever tried to control you?" And she just started thinking, and I says, "I've never controlled you." I've always given you whatever you wanted. I've always taken you where you've gone. I've always, you know, been, you know, and she's just kind of like, oh, yeah, okay. So, you know, um, teaching them, being an example to them uh, in this doctrine, integrity, having that integrity. Yeah, when there are things that are doctrinal, that are truth, stand on them. You don't budge. You know, you, you don't change your mind. Um, you make sure that people know what you believe. And I respect that of people, even though I may disagree, at least they have something that they believe and they really hold to it very strongly. That's a good trait to have. And God in time will show them whether it's uh, true or not or whether it's something that we should be so, so dogmatically holding. So he goes on in, in verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that one who is an opponent, again, here we have the opponent, uh, those that would... Um, would feel the freedom to blaspheme God, the same people, their opponents, may be ashamed having nothing evil to say of you. Now, how can they say anything of you when you're acting right? Exhort servants. Now we go to servants. Servants uh, to be obedient to their masters. We would say employees, employers. Uh, so employees, be obedient to your masters, their, your own masters. Uh, to be well-pleasing in all things, not answering back. Um, <clears throat> kind of like children <clears throat> when you direct them and you know ask them to do things and they answer back. Why do I have to do that? Oh, well, because I asked you. That's why. And yet people do that at work all the time. When I worked for Edison, it was always interesting how grown men, and, and I work with mostly men. There was a few ladies there. Grown men would, would remark back like that, you know, to their bosses. And I would say, but we have a job to do, and it's it's our responsibility to do our job. That's what they pay us for. Why would we remark back like that? Just do your job, and you'll be fine. Why do you answer back? Not pilfering, but showing all good in uh, <clears throat> fidelity that they may adorn the doctrine of God, our Savior, in all things. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present age. So be an example. Be a light and be salt in this present age, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I look for that every day. Every time the clouds are, are out, right? Or every time you hear something going on in the Middle East um, with, with uh, 
the Islams. Um, apparently, the they just stopped chemical um, weapons going to Hezbollah there in Israel. Uh, they were trying to sneak in there, and Israel found out about it and, and were able to uh, capture <clears throat> the weapons and keep them away from from them. That sh I'm sure they would have would have done great harm. But you see stuff like that, or the fires that were started in all of Israel by the Muslims, and they caught several of those people too. And you, you go, wow, Lord, your, your coming is soon when the rapture will happen and the church will be gone. And then once the church is gone, and then the tribulation period will start, and then the second coming of Christ will come, and he'll finally do away with, with everything. So that's the glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. And again, God, our Savior, here in verse 10, speaking of the deity of Jesus Christ, for the grace, <clears throat> I'm sorry, verse 13, um, 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people, zealous for good works. Speak these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise your youth or despise you. Um, Paul <clears throat> was speaking to Titus and to Timothy. They was, were young men that were in the church and they were supposed to not usurp their authority but use their authority in the word of God and keeping the word of God as their as their authority and they were to speak it to exhort and to rebuke in the church <clears throat> and that's difficult to do in the church you have to do that definitely with gentleness and with love <clears throat> and you want to make sure that the church understands that there are biblical principles that we're to live by, that we are to follow, and yet you don't want to make them feel like they're, oh, what's the word? You know, they're in some sort of group that just comes down on them all the time. You know, you have to give them room to grow at the same time but there is a place for the for the correction and being able to be corrected I think Proverbs talks about um, when someone rebukes you you should receive that rebuke because it's for your your benefit uh, Hebrews 13 talks about those who rule over you they rule over you <coughs> because they're watching out for your soul and that's a hard place to be I mean it's hard for me to even explain that because you, you know you try and I've tried different things on how to approach people and how to share with people. And I, I just find there is no good way. <laughs> I've tried different ways. And it's just, it's just a difficult thing to do. Yet the Bible tells Titus to do that. That's his responsibility. Now, you don't want to push people away. You know, like I was sharing yesterday, Jack Hibbs, uh, his church is so big. He says, I just share it like it is because I want some to get out. You know, so that's his way of, of doing it. You know, he shares the truth and he's very bold with it. And if they don't like it, well, move on. There's there's someone waiting to fill your seat. You know, and as I said, we're a smaller church, so I'm kind of like, no, don't leave. <laughs> so I'm really careful what I say. So there is differences. You know, in a bigger church, you're, you are able to do that with more liberty because you have plenty of people. But with a smaller church, you have to be very cautious. And I know people like smaller churches compared to bigger churches, and so it's totally different. And I've learned, I've learned throughout the years sometimes to not say anything at all, and just to be like Christ and let the Lord just minister to them and, and allow God to work in their lives. Uh, some things don't matter. Some things do matter. But when they're doctrinal issues and they're, they're errors, those things definitely have to be corrected. Because it's for the safety of the body of Christ. Uh, pastors should be also protecting um, the Lord's sheep too. And that's important. So. So, so Paul then again is giving Titus the instructions here for the body. And these are great instructions for really every group within the church, right? From the older men to the younger men, older women to the younger women, to even employers and employees on how we really should walk in this world. And when we do that, as, as Jesus said, if you, if you lift up the Son, then all men will be drawn unto him. All men will be drawn to God. We need to be more salt and light. So. Okay, thank you for joining us on this Monday. We hope that you'll have a blessed rest of the week. We'll see you on Wednesday at 9 a.m. in the morning. If you have any questions, go ahead and post them, and I'll try to get back to them or comments. Appreciate it. Uh, it's amazing what the Lord's doing. 
through Facebook. I just did an advertisement uh, on Facebook for this devotional that's going to reach a couple of thousand of people to advertise them about the situation. So keep that in prayer. Share it with your friends. Invite them uh, to come out to the church itself or to view us on Facebook. God bless you guys. Let's, let's pray, and we'll pray for you too for, the, for your week. Father, we come before you, and we pray for all your your children, Lord, for the rest of this week, Lord, that this Monday, Lord, would be just a, a great way to start, Father, in your word, and that, Lord, you would just empower us, Lord, to live a, a life, Lord, that would reflect your son, Jesus Christ, and that men would be drawn uh, to our Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Wash us and cleanse us from all of our sins, Lord God. And, Lord, we thank you for your commitment to us, your faithfulness, that you promise never to leave us or forsake us, Lord. And we can really hold and cling to that promise, Lord. We love you, Lord. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. See you on Wednesday. God bless.